The island of Madagascar is home to some of the strangest, yet most beloved animals in the world, namely lemurs. But unlike other landmasses where large primates are found, Madagascar's largest, the injury, is no more than 70 centimetres. But just a few centuries ago, lemurs larger than gorillas roamed Madagascar. What were they like and how did they go extinct? Let's find out. Madagascar has been split from all other landmasses for 85 million years when it split from India. We know little about the historic life of Madagascar, as the fossil record went blank around 66 million years ago, and stayed that way until around 24,000 BC, leaving a lot of questions about the evolution of Madagascar creatures, with researchers having to rely on genetic evidence to piece together the evolution of Madagascar's animals. The evidence suggests that lemurs first arrived to Madagascar by clinging to floating logs or rafts of vegetation that had been blown out to sea by storms. A climate model showed that ocean currents would have swept them to Madagascar's shores in a journey of about three weeks. This kind of migration is known as sweepstake dispersal, defined as a dispersal route that is rarely used, but will occasionally transport organisms across extreme environments to previously uninhabited lands. The model also showed that these fast currents are rare, perhaps only one month out of every 100 years, and since it would have taken three weeks, only smaller animals with low metabolism such as small mammals and reptiles would have been able to survive. These lemurs arrived around 50 million years ago and were followed by tenrex, the ancestors of the fusa, and finally rodents 24 million years ago. Around the same time the ocean currents shifted to an east to west current, isolating the island of Madagascar to the present day. The original lemur which colonised Madagascar was likely small and nocturnal, resembling modern-day mouse lemurs the closest. It's hard to say what conditions it would have encountered on arrival, but we do know that it had a dry subtropical climate, with the habitats likely resembling the arid shrubland of southwest Madagascar, placing a strong evolutionary pressure on lemurs to become drought-resistant. These lemurs diverged over millions of years to form the well over 100 species we know today. The Ii is believed to be the first lemur to diverge from the rest, and might have even arrived separately from all other lemurs and subsequently evolved its long finger for drilling into trees for insects. Since then, two major diversification events have occurred. The first unfolded between 42 and 30 million years ago, and resulted in the evolution of injuries, shifakas, woolly lemurs, dwarf lemurs, mouse lemurs, and lemurids. This divergence coincided with the cooling of Madagascar, which would have allowed forests to cover much of the island. The second diversification event was brought about by the onset of the Indian monsoon between 12 and 8 million years ago, and resulted in the speciation of true lemurs and sportive lemurs. When considering the now extinct lemurs, their diversity rivals that of all other primates, ranging from the tiny births lemur to the giant, possibly 200 kilograms, Archaeoindris. Sloth lemurs were a generalist group of lemurs that fed on a wide variety of fruits, nuts, and foliage, acting much like sloths, only larger. The family was separated by river systems which formed a biogeographical boundary, leading the family to speciate into four genera distributed across the island. Archaeoindris, the largest lemur ever, was a member of the sloth lemur family, and only known from one fossil in the centre of the country. This lemur was larger than a gorilla, and the second heaviest primate in history after the huge Gigantopithecus. Archaeoindris is believed to have spent much of its time on the ground, acting similarly to large grazing herbivores on other landmasses. This in turn may have allowed it to reach its huge size, as it would not have needed to be as agile as tree-dwelling species. Humans first arrived 2,000 years ago from Indonesia, making it one of the most recent large landmasses to be inhabited by humans. Later migration also occurred from Africa, contributing to the unique language and genetics of Malagasy people. These early settlers practiced slash and burn on the forests, a practice locally known as tavi, to convert the forest to cropland, destroying large areas of forest, which only increased when cattle arrived from Africa. This practice continues to this day, and over time has led to Madagascar losing 90% of its indigenous forest, with almost all of Madagascar's highlands having been cleared by 1600 AD. This restricted much of its unique fauna to tiny pockets of forest, and likely caused many to disappear without ever being recorded. The sloth lemurs likely disappeared between 500 and 1000 years ago, as a result of both hunting by humans and destruction of their habitat. Despite what the name suggests, monkey lemurs were not great climbers, and were the most terrestrial of all species, preferring to travel along the ground. Monkey lemurs represented two genuses, Hadropithecus and Archaeolemur. 
Hadropithecus being the larger of the two, was easier for humans to hunt, with an extinction estimated at 770 AD at the latest, whereas Archaeolemur survived much later, until perhaps 1270 AD. The giant rough lemur was closely related to the rough lemurs of today, but much bigger, three to four times larger to be exact. And due to its preference for larger fruits, they were likely important seed dispersers. Unlike the other rough lemurs, the giant rough lemur moved slower and had a smaller brain to conserve energy. It was thought that it went extinct before 900 AD, but fossils found in the southwest of the country date to just 500 years ago, so who knows? Maybe it could have survived much longer than previously thought. Another amazing species was the giant Ai, which was probably indistinguishable from the Ai, except for the fact that it was two and a half times larger. Fossils of this species have only been found in the southwest and southern portion of the island, well outside the current range of the Ai, which inhabits the north and east of the country. I couldn't find anything on why it would become larger in drier habitats, so I'd like to throw out my own theory. With scarcer resources in drier areas, it might have become bigger to allow it to exploit a wider variety of food sources. Looking at it the other way around, the eye might have become smaller to exploit a specific niche. In this case, using its long finger to drill for insects to avoid competition with the wider variety of species found in the rainforest. It is entirely unknown how the giant eye was able to survive in such a xeric environment, whilst having the same morphological adaptations as the eye, a tree-dwelling species. It became extinct sometime within the last 1000 years, the II today might have a similar fate, as its habitat is being decimated for logging and agriculture, leaving its survival in a dubious position. Megalodapis, or the koala lemurs, were very different from any surviving lemur, getting their name because their body shape resembled that of a koala. Despite being 1.5 meters long, they were adapted for life in the trees and lacked the stability to travel on the ground. Their heads were distinct among primates, most notably having eyes on the side of their heads, a trait unique among primates. Based on the morphology of their jaws, they are believed to have been folivores, meaning that their diet consisted of leaves, and they may have weighed up to 140 kilograms. They disappeared from the fossil record around 1000 years ago, after much of Madagascar's native forest had been cleared. As we only have a small number of fossils of each species, we don't really know when they went extinct, but anecdotal evidence suggests they might have survived into much more recent times. In 1995, a research team conducted interviews in southwest Madagascar, recording stories of large lemur-like creatures called Kidiki. One elderly local reported seeing Kidiki in 1952, noting its human-like face, dark fur, and distinctive white patches, whilst it moved in leaps on the ground, responding to calls similar to that of the Indri. Someone else also reported seeing one, noting its baboon-like stance. While some believe Kidiki to be misidentified Shafakas or other lemurs, I'd like to think that it could have been one of these extinct lemurs, with those descriptions matching sloth lemurs the closest. There is some evidence that can help us dismantle whether habitat loss or hunting was the main cause of their extinction. Studies of sediment core showed that a fungus that relies on animal dung declined sharply after humans arrived, indicating a significant reduction in large lemur populations around 300 AD. This decline was followed with a rise in charcoal particles, suggesting increased wildfires, starting in the southwest and spreading island-wide over the next millennium. The loss of large herbivores likely led to an accumulation of plant material, fueling more frequent and intensive wildfires. These fires contributed to habitat destruction, particularly the wooded savannas and arboreal habitats essential for the giant lemurs. Since Madagascar went uninhabited by humans for many more years than any other landmass, its megafauna survived into much more recent times than Europe, Australia, or the Americas. It wasn't just lemurs that have been driven extinct on Madagascar, but also aardvarks, elephant birds, giant fusas, Malagasy crowned eagles, Malagasy lapwings, giant tortoises, alouette or grebes, dwarf hippos, shrew ten rex, bats, crocodiles, kuas, and other rodents too. And many of Madagascar's species may disappear in the future.